I have another flashlight review for you. This time it is the Wubin T1. This is the type of flashlight I had no plans on reviewing. If you're interested in knowing why I changed my mind, keep watching. I'd just like to thank Wubin for sending me this flashlight so that I could share it with you. Okay, a moment ago I said this is the type of flashlight that I had no plans of reviewing on my YouTube channel. And the reason is, is because this is considered a tactical flashlight. And I have no use for a tactical flashlight. Now that I'm retired from being a police officer, and I'm not a security guard, I'm not a first responder, and I'm not a military person, the type of things you normally find on a tactical flashlight just didn't interest me. And I didn't think they would make a great crossover into an outdoor light. Well, this flashlight is a little bit different. To start with, it has an outdoor mode as well as a tactical mode, and I'll explain in a minute what that means. But the other thing I didn't see myself using a, a tactical flashlight for is, for the most part, the tail switch is something that I just can't seem to operate with my hands because maybe arthritis, old hands, big hands, I'm not sure what. This, again, is different. It works really well, and I'll explain more about that. So why don't we do exactly that? Let's go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for the Wubin T1. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications. I'll go over its modes of operation, both the tactical and outdoor mode. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. All right, before we get a, a closer look at the Wubin T1 flashlight, I thought I'd just take a moment to show you what else it came with. So here's the box that the flashlight came in. It's actually a rather nice box. It's even magnetized, which is a little different. Um, of course, there's the manual that comes with the flashlight with all the operating instructions as well as the warranty information. There is a lanyard that comes with this. Uh, I'll have more comments on this late, later, but uh, this there is a spot on the flashlight where you you can, if you choose to do so, attach this lanyard to the flashlight. I'll, I'll say right now, it's not something I'm going to do, but again, we'll talk about that in a few moments time. USB type C charging cable, of course, a pair of spare O-rings, and finally, a pocket clip. Now, the pocket clip did come on the flashlight. I took it off, and I'll explain why in a little while. But for those of you who like to use pocket clips, then this is there. It's easy enough to take on and off. I just chose to remove it. And again, I said, as I said, I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, let's put those things out of the way, bring the flashlight back in, and let's talk about a few of its key features, and then we'll get into more detail. So right up front, the single thing that makes this a rather unique as far as a tactical flashlight goes is that you can switch between tactical mode and outdoor mode. Now, to be honest, there's not a lot of difference, and I'll explain it now and give more detail later. In the tactical mode, you have two lumen settings, the eco and the high, and that's it. You still have strobe and you still have SOS, but if, as far as lumen settings, it's just eco and high, and that makes some sense from a tactical point of view. However, when you switch it over to the outdoor mode, you have eco low, medium, and high, as well as strobe and SOS. So you just get a little bit more choice in the outdoor mode. So I think it could be left on one mode or the other, whatever your preference is. Of course, mine's going to be the outdoor mode. It's nice to have those additional lumen settings to uh, choose from. So what else does that makes this one kind of unique? And this is something I would have used as a tactical light. And actually, I can see using it as an outdoor light. And that is the momentary on-off. A partial press down on the tail switch will just give you momentary on off for whatever the last lumen setting is that you had it set at. And that's true of eco, low, medium, or high, or the eco and high if you're on the tactical side of things. It has a momentary uh, strobe as well just by pushing the, the uh, tail switch in one direction, it doesn't matter either direction. Pushing the tail switch in either direction will give you a momentary strobe. If you hold Hold it there a little longer, it will stay on strobe. And I will talk more about the SOS again in a little while. And the other thing that really is different about this light is the fact that there is an integrated collar on the light that covers over the USB Type-C charging port. Why don't I show that to you now? 
So you can see the USB Type-C charging port, and right above it is the little LED. Now, it's not showing up right now, but there's a little LED for battery status, of course. Now, what's so cool about this charging port cover, and it does have O-rings, tightens up quite nice and tight, is that this has an IP68, and of course, I'll give you this information again, an IP68 rating, and it is that collar that guarantees that you're not going to get any moisture or dust in the charging port cover. And really, there is no risk of losing a little rubber port cover that comes with a lot of the other flashlights. And there's one more thing I'll show you now because I don't want to miss the opportunity. It has a rubber ring right here, and that's removable. It's quite stretchy, and you can take that right off the flashlight flashlight if you don't like it. It's there to make it more comfortable for holding on to if you're going to be using it one hand and it does work. You may or may not like it. I quite like it and I don't see any reason why I would take it off. All right, let's go over the physical specifications for this light. So the overall length of this light is 6 0.38 inches or 162 millimeters. The diameter at its widest is 1.57 inches or 40 millimeters. It comes in at 7.6 ounces or 215 grams. It's a little heavy, but it's a big light. It comes included with a 3100 milliamp 18650 battery. It is IP68 rated, and it does have an impact rating of 1.5 meters. All right, let's just take a moment to give you some close-ups of the Wuben T1 flashlight, and then we'll go into the performance specifications. So let's start right at the reflector. And you can see that it's a highly polished, deep reflector, and that accounts for the long beam cast. Around the outside of the basal, you'll see some shallow crenellations, very common to tactical flashlights. It does allow the light to be used as an impact weapon if you have to do so. It, let's move down to the fins right here. These do help with heat dissipation, especially when the light is on in the high mode. Then a close-up of the collar that covers over the USB Type-C charging port. Some more knurling down the body that do aid in the grip. This is the rubber ring that I mentioned a minute ago that does aid in grip. It is removable, but I quite like how it allows me to hold on to the light. And finally, the toggle on off switch that allows me to do everything with, with this light, including momentary on, continuous beam, the strobe light, the SOS, and the lumen setting changes. All right, let's take a look at the performance specifications for the light. I have it set right at the highest, and I'm going to turn it on, and you can notice right away that the camera is compensating for the additional light, but at high, it comes in at 2,000 lumens. Of course, that'll only last for one minute before dropping down to 700 lumens which will last for another one and a half hours if i toggle the switch it'll drop right into the eco mode which will come in at five lumens lasting 100 hours toggle again it comes in for the low mode of 130 lumens for 10 hours toggle one more time and we're at the medium lumen setting of 550 lumens lasting two and a half hours toggle again and I'm back up to high. Let me turn the light off. Now to activate the strobe, I toggle the switch just momentarily in either direction and you can see that I'm activating the strobe light. If I double push the uh, toggle, it'll, I will get the SOS mode, toggle it again, I turn that off. It does have a, a beam cast of 498 meters, which is considerable. It's actually very impressive, as you'll see when we get outdoors. So the operating system for the Wubin T1 flashlight is actually very, very simple to use. Everything is done from the toggle style tail cap switch, including switching between tactical and outdoor modes and back again. In order to make that switch, you'll partial press on the tail cap switch four times very quickly, followed by a fifth press, which is a full long press. So to move over between modes, let's do that now. One, two, one, two, three, four, and you can see that the light flashed three times to confirm that it had switched over. And now I should be in the tactical mode, on at high beam, low, high, 
low. All right, and to switch back, all I would need to do is once again, press down four times quickly, followed by the long press. So having gone over the key features as well as the physical and performance specifications and the operating modes for the Wubin T1 flashlight, there's really only one thing left to do. Let's get outside and do some testing. So I'm out in the woods doing some nighttime testing of the Wubin T1 tactical flashlight. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be leaving this in the outdoor mode because I think it has the greater range of lights. So I'll be turning it on in eco and unlikely that you can see the light. I can see it in maybe 15, 20 feet. Not something I would use for navigation, but certainly bright enough for anything immediately at my feet or inside of my tent. So that's pretty good. Let's take it up one notch. That's low. Do you know, with this light and the way it focuses so forward, it does have that central hotspot and a significant amount of spill and it just blends through nicely. Uh, low actually is quite a good high amount of light for navigating if I wanted to save battery. Taking it up to medium. Medium is what I would likely use most of the time to get the most out of the light and still uh, have significant amount of battery left and let's take it up to high and there you go high penetrates as far into the woods as the trees will allow me to go and that's at least 70 80 feet down the trail here now let's see I'll turn it off give you an example of the strobe and now I can give you an example of the SOS once again back on high yeah this is actually makes me a believer of using this tactical light as an outdoor light. All right, so this has been the Wubin T1 tactical light. All right, let's go over a few of the pros and cons for the Wubin T1 flashlight. To begin, what do I really like about this light? I think it has to be the operating system. The fact that you can access all the modes and all the lumen settings from that tail cap switch, I think is a real plus. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I really have become to appreciate it. The next thing I like is the beam cast. This does cast out such a long distance with a nice tight central hotspot and a good amount of flood on either side of it. I think I think the other thing which is a great idea is the collar that covers over the USB Type-C charging port. It just ensures you're not going to get any water or dust in the charging port and you don't have to worry about losing a little rubber dust port cover that you might on some of the other flashlights. Okay, those are the things I like, but there are a few things I think could be different. Number one, there is no direct access to the eco mode, either in the tactical side or in the outdoor side. In order to get that low lumen setting you have to run through whatever the last setting was on the light. So the moment you turn it on if you were in the high beam setting you have to switch down to the low beam setting. I think that's a real uh, poor choice on Wubin's part because as a tactical light if I want to be very discreet and have just enough light maybe inside of my patrol car or looking at a notebook or looking at something I want to be discreet about and I had to have and on the last time I used it I had it on the high mode and I, now I have to switch down, I'm going to increase the likelihood of someone detecting my presence. So I think the fact that you can't access the eco mode without going through the other two lumen settings or the other lumen settings, depending on which side you're on, tactical or outdoor, I think that is a just not a good thing in this light. So what else? Uh, small stuff. And this one of them is the pocket clip. To me, the pocket clip, one, it was not functional. I could not see using it and it got in the way when I was holding on onto the light. So no problem, easy to take off and you don't have to use that pocket clip. The lanyard that came with it. I don't know how that was supposed to be used. Um, certainly I'm not going to hang a light like this around my neck, especially if I'm on, on patrol. I may see uh, attaching it to somewhere on my belt so that if I drop it, I don't lose it. But no, I, I'm not going to be doing that either. So I just didn't see any use for the lanyard. It's a nice lanyard. I'm going to keep it for other uses. I just can't see using it with the flashlight. And probably the last thing, and this isn't something wrong with the light at all. It's just this is a missed opportunity. This should have a holster. This is intended to go on your belt. It's too big for your pocket. Well, most people's pockets anyway. It's not something I'm going to carry in my pocket. If I'm going to carry it on a duty belt as a police officer, as a security person, or as any type of first responder, I want a belt holster for this light. 
Okay, Wubin may be listening. Hopefully they are. And if they are, please include a belt holster for this in future editions. Okay, those are my thoughts on the Wubin T1. I'm now interested in hearing what you have to say. What do you think about this light? What do you like? What do you not like? And just give me your comments. If you have any experience, give me those as well. If you have any questions, please put those all in the comments section below. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.